Okay. Hi everyone, this is Tracy Chamberlain Higginbotham of Women Ties here with another fantastic woman entrepreneur who's part of our organization. And we are doing a woman of the week interview with Christy Mitchell. And Christy is someone that I met just, I think, prior to the pandemic. She came to one of our Women Ties events in the Rochester area. I believe she won an advertising package. And I actually can remember exactly where she was sitting during that program. There was something about her that just, I don't know, just sparked an interest in me. Maybe she had a really great 30 second pitch. Um, and then she got involved with Women's Ties in February uh, of this past year. And I can tell you, she has been so active in attending a lot of our programs and meetings. And I think that that's really smart when you join any organization that you get involved because you can join an organization, but you're not going to meet people and you're not going to be able to, to pitch or sell if you don't get involved in some way. So welcome very much, Christy Mitchell, to today's Woman of the Week interview. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my gosh, absolutely. So I remember when I was back in college, I took one marketing course as a business major. And of course, I just took that course to be able to just get through, you know, and get my degree. Did not learn until later in life when I started my business how important marketing is for women entrepreneurs. And so I just wonder how you got interested uh, in, in marketing as a general subject. Um, let, let people know a little bit more about you. Yeah, it's kind of a long story, so I'll make it <laughs> short because I know we don't have a lot of time. Um, I started working at RIT um, shortly after graduating college. I didn't go to RIT, um, but I actually got my undergrad in psychology. But I got a job at RIT. They were starting a new online executive MBA program, and they needed administrative help with that. Um, they already had an on-campus program, so they were modeling it after that. Um, and I knew someone in the department, so she helped me get my foot in the door. And I just loved being in that environment in the higher ed setting, um, loved working with an online program. It was something new. There were a lot of things we had to figure out as far as logistics and marketing and admissions and all of these things. Um, so I kind of did a little bit of everything, but what I gravitated toward the most was really the marketing aspect. So we worked with another company. I really had to pay attention to how they were marketing our program to make sure that it didn't come off as too salesy for, you know, what RIT stands for as a brand and all of that. Um, but then there was a lot of back end stuff too that, you know, evolved over time, things like CRM and email marketing and websites and blogs and social media and all of those things that come with marketing. And so I just gradually over time got exposed to more and more digital marketing and really kind of fell in love with it. So at, at the time, I was at RIT for eight years, and at the time I left, my position was very much focused on marketing by the time I left. You know, so we have another similarity, because I was in higher education for nine years, except I was doing alumni relations, um, because my background was event planning um, and management, but I was responsible for putting together the marketing pieces for our alumni events that went all over the country, and that's really how I got involved it wasn't that I became a graphic designer because we did have somebody we could work with, but there was something exciting about creating a marketing piece that would, you know, in, invite these special people to our events. And that's where I got hooked a little bit on marketing as well. And there's so many descriptions. When you, when you say marketing as a woman entrepreneur, some people think public relations, some people think graphic design and advertising some think sales what's your how, how would you explain the way that you think marketing uh really is i love that you're asking this question because i just had this conversation with somebody recently because they're like they even apologize they're like i don't really understand marketing like what is marketing and i was like i love that you're asking that question because it is it's confusing i see that marketing is like this huge umbrella right? And underneath it are like all these different aspects of marketing. So there's branding, which can include colors and logos and messaging and all of that. There's the graphic design, like nitty gritty, you know, we need designs for, you know, print ads or digital ads or whatever we're doing, like this graphic design piece. There's just writing content, um, whether that's website copy or email or, you know, blurbs for social media. Um, there's that there's a website right like some people specialize just in website development and creative and 
and that whole thing. There's paid advertising. People specialize in placing digital ads and, you know, managing ad spend and generating leads and all of those things. Um, and I'm sure I'm forgetting a bunch of things in the middle. There's social media, right? There's people who specialize just in social media. So there's like all of these different aspects that fall under this huge marketing umbrella. And I think that that's what can be really challenging for people when they may know that they need marketing help, but they don't really know what it is exactly they need. Right, exactly. And, you know, as women entrepreneurs, I always say, I, I, you know, I got my first company was an event planning company because I came out of event planning from higher, from higher ed. And when I started my business, you know, all I wanted to do was find event planning clients, you know, because I love the concept of event planning and event marketing as it became the case. But as you know, when you open a business, you know, you have to sell, you have to find clients in order to allow you to do what it is that you want to do. And I don't know if a lot of women understand the true importance that sales and marketing play. I think the two most besides what it is that you actually provide to your customers. Did you yeah. find that you're, you're in that field, but have you heard that from your customers? Um, yeah, so I, I love thinking, so my background, I was really self-taught in marketing, right? Like I didn't go to school for that for my undergrad. I did end up, I earned my MBA while I was at RIT and I took marketing courses as part of that, but I was really self-taught in marketing until I got to those courses. And a lot of my learning came from HubSpot, which is a company that has a marketing software platform. It's like completely inclusive of almost every aspect of marketing that you need to run. And their whole methodology is what they call inbound methodology. So the fact that you're like drawing people in and how is it that you're drawing people in and then you're nurturing them. So I always, especially when you talk about sales and marketing, I envision this funnel, right? Like this is the awareness stage up here. We need to like bring people in, make them aware of what we have to offer. And then you have to nurture them and like funnel them down before they could become a client. Um, and so I very much, in my mind, sales and marketing are completely, you know, aligned. And I've worked, I mean, in between working at RIT and then becoming my own boss, I also worked in a financial services company where I supported a marketing team. Okay. And so that was a really good experience in RIT. I mean, when I was at RIT, I worked with an admissions officer who was really our salesperson. So we worked very closely together, but being in a B2B corporate space, having that, you know, having a sales team that I'm supporting and like figuring out the right marketing that's, I mean, marketing could come up with like the best creative in the world, but mm -hmm. if the sales team isn't excited about it, it really doesn't matter. It's not going to go anywhere. Right. Um, so I definitely see those things. Let's go being completely there. intertwined. So, um, so how do you, how would you help another woman entrepreneur? Is there like a common, uh, example, um, of what you offer in services or kind of that need that women entrepreneurs have that you fill for them, maybe similar to how you supported that sales team? Yeah. So I, my kind of signature offering is what I call marketing success roadmap. And that really involves a lot of data and analysis on my part. So the, the business owner gives me access to Google Analytics and what if they have it, a lot of people don't give me access to like basically everything digital that you have. I will pull all of the numbers. I will run reports. I will, you know, come up with my observations and my recommendations. And then we sit and we talk about it and what areas I see are the biggest opportunities. I really like to take a holistic view on it and looking at all of the pieces, because especially as women entrepreneurs, most of us are accustomed to just trying to do all of the things ourselves. Um, and it can be very overwhelming. And so I love looking at the data to see what areas I think can be improved, mm -hmm. what areas will give you the biggest bang for your buck as far as return on investment of your time and maybe money, depending on what the tactic is. Um, and then making recommendations that are realistic and doable for that entrepreneur. So I'm not just going to come up with this marketing plan in a silo and hand it to you and say, okay, have at it. It's a very collaborative approach. Like if you tell me like, I cannot blog more than once a month, then okay. Once a month is what we'll agree to. And we'll, you know, come up with good topics that you could be blogging about. I'll teach you how to make sure you're getting your keywords in there in a good way that will help you get found. 
Um, but it's a very collaborative approach to kind of bring a marketing plan together that is realistic, it's doable, it's going to help you achieve your goals. I'm extremely goal oriented and numbers oriented. I want to know what you're looking for uh, because the recommendations I'm going to make are going to help serve those goals. Mm -hmm. And then, and then we have follow up meetings to hold you accountable because I found that that is a huge piece that people really value is knowing you're going to meet with me again in two weeks. You're going to get done the stuff that you said you're going to get done. <laughs> I just, it's, it's so true. I just did a Wednesday wisdom that was about accountability <clears throat> and I've been relating it a little bit towards, you know, weight loss and exercise and, you know, um, understanding very much so that my actions create a result. And if, if I didn't have a kind of a computer online program to be able to really see what I was doing or how something affects something else. I don't think I could be as successful in this process. And that's what it sort of reminds me of uh, with what you're talking about. I think the same thing if women entrepreneurs do surveys to be able to, if they just do uh, say an online Zoom program, for example, you know, your emotions wanna say, I did it really well, or maybe I don't, you know, people had a blank stare, maybe I really did bad. But sometimes when you ask those questions and you calculate the quantitative data through a survey, you see it from a logical, uh, realistic perspective opposed to your emotional. So I yes. think, don't you, I mean, that's what I think is so important about looking at data because we can think whatever we want, but data shows us kind of the truth. Yeah. And I think data, I, I just love data. So it's like, I'm, <laughs> I feel like I'm so nerdy to say that, but I, you know, sometimes I get people coming to me and they're like, I'm doing all the things I'm supposed to do. I'm writing my blog and I'm doing my social and I'm sending my emails. And like, I just don't have enough time in the day and I'm not seeing the results. I'm not getting people asking me for proposals or, you know, requesting my services. And so why am I bothering doing all of these things if, if they're not, you know, I'm, I know in my head, I'm supposed to be doing them, right. but that's, I think that's the tough part. And a lot of people just don't even know where to start to pull the data to figure out what is it that you're actually getting from all of these different tactics that you're doing. Right, so it sounds like you really have to start at ground zero. You can't really move forward in life or business or new projects or new services or fix, you know, add a division to your company without understanding where you where you start from. And I think yes. some, I was just talking to a woman entrepreneur who who's creating her second business and has gone through this very extensive business plan. And she said, so when's the last time you updated your business plan? And I said, do you want an honest answer? <laughs> this is probably not the right answer. Um, I go, it's, you know, it literally has been a while. I think when we start out, maybe we do that marketing research and we have our numbers, but then things get going and maybe we don't wanna know if we're doing bad or not on point. Um, and it sounds like too, a lot of what you can help uncover and discover for women entrepreneurs can be useful within a business planning for their marketing plan within a business plan. Do you find, yeah. that, do you find that to be true? Yeah, for sure. I feel like people often reach out to me at, at two points. It's, um, they've, they decided to launch something new. They have a new offering or, you know, a new service or product that they're offering it and they need to get the message out and they're not really sure where to start with that. Um, and the other piece is, I think it's just this kind of like underlying nagging feeling like I was just talking about that like I'm doing all these things but I don't know why and I don't feel like they're worth my time anymore and I don't have enough time. No one has enough time, right? right? Yeah. So I think that those are the those are the two, two most often times that I hear from people. And I do think that there's a lot of value, especially right? Like some people have been in business for a really long time and haven't revisited their business plan. Like you're saying, some people have just been going through the motions and, and they keep, and they keep doing all the same things and to get an outsider's perspective to evaluate all of it. You know, maybe some people are worried that it's going to put more work on their plate. And so they put it off or they don't even know where to start. But I think a lot of times I, a lot of value in, in working with an outsider is they can help simplify for you, like taking things away. Like maybe you don't need to be doing all of these things. Right. Maybe it's not about adding. Yeah. Maybe it's about subtracting and honing in on like these two specific things and like really go all in on these. 
those because that's, your sales that's where you're going to get. <laughs> that's your sales pitch. Yes. Because, or, you know, the advantage, because so many women, like you said, have so many things on their plate that, to, you know, it's so hard to let go. I re- there are so many different thoughts that came up while you were speaking about, you know, one of them is that, you know, women entrepreneurs treat their businesses like their children and you, you know, like you can't let them go when things aren't going well and it's hard to reprimand them and it's hard to pull them in. And that's kind of what, when you were talking, it was reminding me of is, you know, you can live in this kind of dream state and just um, think everything's going well, or you can take a really nice, doesn't have to be a hard look, but a, you know, a solid look and, and figure out what you are doing well and what you're not, you know, that just makes you a stronger woman entrepreneur. And the other thought that came to my mind is so many women entrepreneurs, not so many, some women start um, businesses, but they treat it more as a hobby than a business. And I think that's to give us something to do or to, um, to bring in some extra income. But if I think you're really serious about wanting to do your business right and expand and or reach more people, you got to take it more seriously than that. And the planning is, is the part, especially with yeah. different marketing options out there nowadays, you know? So yep. Kudos to you. What are um, what are like three ways women can keep an eye on or analyze what they're doing with their companies? Just generally, I know that you can come in and help them with that. But is there something, just three things they could be looking at to feel like they're in trouble or on track? Yeah, the first thing that comes to mind is Google Analytics. I've been having a lot of conversations with people recently, and they're like. I don't know if I have that set up on my site, uh, which is okay. It's okay. I don't want to like, <laughs> it's all right. You don't know what you don't know. You hired a, chances are you hired a website person. They built you a website. You thought that it had everything that it needed. Yes. It may not have something like Google analytics installed. I just think there's so many good insights that can come from Google analytics. Like step one is making sure you have that set up because you can't go back and get past data. If the Google analytics isn't installed on your site. Um, which that can, I know the term Google analytics can already start like throwing people. Like I just can't even wrap my mind around it. It's basically a way to help you track what people are doing on your website, which is super helpful, how people are getting there. And then how many people are getting there, how they're arriving there, what they're doing when they're on your website, how long are they there? How many pages are they visiting? All those things. Uh, so that's, that's step one, I think is Google analytics. I feel very strongly about that. And if it feels overwhelming, either hire someone to do it or just look it up on YouTube. There's tons of YouTube videos (laughs) saying, how do I set up Google analytics on my WordPress website, on my Squarespace website, whatever it is. Um, if you're a DIY person, I love you. I am too. Um, YouTube is the place to go. So Google analytics is one. The other thing I would say is email marketing if you're doing email marketing a lot of times again people are going through the motions like I have my monthly newsletter I send it out it goes it's done that's great how's it performing um looking at your open rates and your click rates and have you experimented with different days of the week and times of day um I'm a big proponent of testing Mm. and you know if you're going through the trouble of writing the content to create an email Like make sure that you're doing everything you can to to get it in front of people. Um, I'm also a a big fan of resend to non-opener. A lot of people Uh, don't do that. I just started doing that. Yeah, different, some email platforms make it a lot easier. Constant contact is one that makes it very easy to resend to non-openers. But that's another thing, right? You went through all the trouble of creating the content. People didn't open it the first time. So try resending it three days later at a different time of day with a new subject line. Um, and maybe you'll get some more people to open it. Yeah, and I can attest to that just because I don't know if it was something new that Constant Contact put there and I noticed it, I think it was, um, because I'm usually trying to figure out what I can do. And you know, you have the resend options of, you know, three, four or five days, whatever it is. And my my newsletter is the Wednesday Wisdom. So I was like, oh, well, is this gonna be strange that a Wednesday Wisdom's coming on a Saturday or Sunday? (laughs) But I saw the difference. I think my open rates went up um, by like um, five, like instead of being, uh, yeah, I think it went up five percentage points or five, 
it, that's it was, awesome. Yeah, it was substantial enough that I went, you know, people might just be tired of looking at my stuff for on Wednesday. So why not check it out on Sunday? <laughs> you know what there I mean? There you go. I've been doing yeah. it for 15 years. So, you know, they know where, <laughs> where it is, but that's amazing. And do you find it's useful too for some of these new plat, not new platforms, platforms like Constant Contact are offering classes? You know, I mean, if you subscribe to their services, they're giving you options to learn more, or is that just a pure sales pitch from their perspective? Um, a lot of times those things are geared towards getting you to move from the free the free, you know, the, yep. the free like baseline account to like upgrade and get that. So I do see a lot of that, but yeah, sometimes depending on the company, um, I think that they can be really helpful to users because they want you to stay. I mean, especially if you're already on a paid account, they want you to stay and be happy. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of times they will ask for feedback on different features. I've seen that too. But it seems like the advantage for you, for anybody to really work with you is that you are looking at something internally that really can be analyzed. And then you're creating a plan to assist that person and continuing to speak with them, right? And do they find that information on how to hire you on your website or is it something somebody yeah. can sign up for a blog or, you know, an email newsletter? Yep. They can find me at christymitchell.com. So it's K-R-I-S-T-I-M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L.com. Um, I do have a blog. You can sign up for a newsletter. Uh, you can also reach out to me on LinkedIn. Send me a message. I don't accept requests from people unless I know you. So send me a message. I'm happy to hop on a 15-minute call to get to know you and your business. I love meeting new people and helping to make connections for people. So you can reach out that way as well. And the other thing that I know before we go that you're doing is you're sponsoring a program that's coming up soon with the Roch with a very collaborative organization of women's ties, the Rochester Women's Network. What is what yeah. program is that about if somebody's listening and when is it? Yeah, it's a women rise series. So it's something brand new that Rochester Women's Network has never done before. Everyone's getting creative, right? Amidst the pandemic, <laughs> unable to host in-person fundraising events and all of those things. So they put together this four-part series, which starts in May. You can sign up for just one session or you um, get a package deal if you want to sign up for all four. You do not need to be a member of RWN to sign up for that. So yeah, I was really excited to see that opportunity to sponsor such a great, a great series of events with some really awesome speakers lined up, addressing some really important topics pay equity and speaking up and all of these things that are super important. So I was very excited to have the opportunity to sponsor that. Yeah, Rochester Women's Network is just has, has always been so collaborative when women ties came from Syracuse into Rochester, you know, just quarterly to be able to connect Rochester women to women across the state. They were always cross promoting our events and we did the same for them. And I think that collaboration with other women and other women's organizations is another great way for anybody listening to this uh to this interview to you know to expand their horizons um in marketing and sales as well yeah so I, I for sure and everything has still been virtual with rwn so even if you're outside the rochester area you might consider joining yeah just because everything's still online. So there's access to a lot. They do monthly networking events that are all virtual and all different programs and things. So I know, you know, it's, it seems like as much as the pandemic um, and coronavirus has been about staying kind of within your own silo to stay safe, you know, what is being, you know, there's always something positive making lemonades out of lemons. And the fact that you can get on and do so much, th so many things virtually and meet people all over. I know you joined me for an event that was virtual from Binghamton and, you know, you just, have you learned that, that you can open up your marketplace by going outside of Rochester? Has that been something that you would yeah. ask as advice and wisdom? Yeah, for sure. I started searching Eventbrite for virtual networking opportunities. There's a ton out there specifically for women. And it's really cool to be able to get on an event. I mean, I attended one, I think there were over 600 people, which was pretty overwhelming. Um, but they did small breakouts to get to know each other and that sort of thing. And I just, I do think that that is, is for sure an upside that's come out of all of this, just being it being a lot easier to expand your network on, you know, a national scale, a global scale, even. Right. 
Well, this has been such a great conversation. I could talk to you all, yeah. today, especially since we have uh, higher education and the marketing love. Um, but um, we'll stop now and uh, we'll make sure that, again, you can find out more about Christy and all of the different options she has for services and more about her at christymitchell.com. Um, and again, she does have a blog. I just added her blog link to the womenties.blog uh, so that we can cross connect. And I actually sent you a LinkedIn um, connection as well. So always remember you can find out about people either on our directory at womenties.com, LinkedIn and social media. And for Christy, find her again at christymitchell.com. Thank you, Christy, so much for joining us today and sharing some of your great marketing expertise with everybody. Of course. Thank you, Tracy, for having me. I appreciate it. All right. You have a great day. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Back next week for another program.